Chess Familia, what's up? Welcome back to the grind. Okay, let's win some chess points. Playing against Herman from Indonesia. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, are we going to see the cow? Let's see if we see the cow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pawn Man over here. Okie dokie. This should be something else. Okay. So Herman actually has the opposite problem as me. I don't like to push my pawns. And he actually only likes to push his pawns. Um, so this is very different. I think he's trying to just get his knights onto c6 and f6. And then his bishops onto here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it will be kind of fun to figure out a way to sort of take advantage of this. I guess the one thing that he's giving me is he's giving me like very um, rapid sort of a uh, piece development. Hmm. It would be kind of fun to figure out how to punish this, huh? Well, I guess on the bright side, he's giving me like Okay, so he just locked in his light square bishop here. On the bright side, he's giving me like all the development in the world. Kind of tempted to just go trade, trade these off. Uh, maybe I'll put the, maybe I'll put the, let me think about this. I almost want him to push f6 just so I can get my queen out over here onto h5. Like if we, oh no, that'd be a bad idea because the pawn. Hmm. Yeah, there's got to be some way to take advantage of this. Hmm. I wonder what he would do if I went a4. I feel like if I went a4, it would just ruin his entire structure. I'm just going to try it. If he pushes b5, I think it's going to be really good for me, and I'll just scoop my queen back. Yeah, so, so he's basically put his bishop on like the most useless square. <laughs> now that he's blocked it in again. This is kind of similar to what happened last game where the opponent just um, put their light square bishop into a little prison cell. And now his knight can't develop either. He can only go like d7. So I'm imagining like a queen push next. Uh, or uh, not a queen push, uh, a pawn push to attack the queen. But it'll be really easy just to scoot it back. I kind of want to go like e1 and then just start trying to open up the center here. Yeah, trading some of these pieces off is like really tempting too. I kind of want to put the bishop onto e5, offer the trade, and then if I put my knight on e5, he might push like f6, and then I can just scoot it back to f3, and then I'll have like really weak pawns. So that's just an idea. Uh, okay, I think I'm just going to go e1 and sort of prepare for a push to open up the e file at some point. Yeah, I figured that much. Hmm. Do I want to go c2 or d1? c2 or d1? That's the question. I could also play something really funny like b4. I think it's a bit unconventional. I want to keep sort of the queen and the light square bishop on this diagonal. By the way, how many arrows can you? Oh, if you draw the same one, it just erases it. Okay. Um, hmm. I actually kind of want to go c2, sack a bishop. If I can get my queen out here, I should win his other, his dark square bishop. I'm actually willing to ah okay so he noticed that okay okay 
Well, this is really good. That's like it's a really bad square. I was thinking he was going to go f6. So if I, if I played uh, bishop e5, he would just trade off with the dark square bishop. So I think this is a, kind of a really bad move for him. And I'm actually going to offer to trade bishops here in favor of getting my knight out. I think I'm going to be able to harass this corner this game, but we'll see. I don't want to get too confident. Yeah, see, he can't put his knight out on f6 to block this. And if he puts a pawn there, it's just really bad. If he puts a pawn on f6 to block, it's, it's just really bad because it sort of just exposes this pawn right here. And I'm willing to just fall back and then just sack this bishop, get his knight, and then attack his bishop at the same time. And then it's going to be really easy to get checks on the king here. That's the idea, at least. I don't play these games very often where the opponent just tries to create like sort of really nasty pawn structures like this. And so he wants to trade off. I wonder if it's worth it. Maybe I just leave that there. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, it it's going to make his kingside castle. So, I mean, obviously he can't castle kingside anymore. So I'm actually just willing to let this go. His rooks are disconnected at this point. And he can't castle kingside. So I feel like we're in a decent spot here. Only thing that sucks here is that I can't really sack a bishop on this square here. Hmm, he wants to trade off. I'm, re I'm really tempted to play knight, g6, he takes with the pawn, I recapture, he takes with the knight, then I take with the... Oh no, I can't do that. I'm losing that. <laughs> Just kidding. Right, so he's got one, two, three. Ah, uh, he's got three defenders on g6, so that's not really feasible. Don't want to trade off the knight here. Do I want to go run around and do something else? I think I'd rather do something like put the knight on f6 at this point. Hmm. f6 just seems like a really good square. Oh no, I can't do that. I can't do that because that just loses the knight then. Just kidding. Hmm. Do I care at this point? I mean, my position is just so much better. Do I really care? Maybe I try to get my knight more involved. You know what? I'm going to just do that. Yeah, I like this better. Now I still have an annoying knight on e5. I, I like this much better. I like this much better. I think what I could start trying to do next is just busting open the e-file. Yeah, his light square bishop is just going to have a really hard time in this game. A really hard time. I'm actually probably just going to push e4 next. Right? Or do I want to? I would push e4 with the hopes of him taking e4. Well, no, even if he... Even if he 
even if he takes, it's good if I take on e4, but even if I take on d5, it's still fine because it's going to break up his pawn structure here, right? My one kind of annoyance right now is this knight. I want to get my queen. I think what I want to do is try to get my queen on this square eventually. On h6. So I'll probably go for like a bit of a double attack here. Yeah, once I push e4, I'll be attacking d5 and h6 at the same time. I'm surprised he hasn't push, pushed uh, f6 yet. Let's make sure I'm not going to get forked next. Let's see. He can't go G G3, he can't go... I guess he could go H4. Maybe it's worth taking this piece at this point. Hmm. I think what he's going to do is take with the pawn here and try to line his queen and his rook up on the G file. I think that's what he's going to be planning, but... um. Oh, sure. He's just, he's protecting h6 there. I still think e4 is the play. I, I see what he's doing, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. So, yeah, so if I take the knight, he's going to take with this pawn. And then he's going to just look for the maiden one. But I'm willing to do something else. This. I think it's going to ruin his whole plan. So now he has to take the queen and knight. And I get to take uh, sort of his knight in the process here. Well, that was kind of a lame way to win. Uh, normally, I don't like to post videos uh, that are won when the opponent, the opponent, the opponent abandons the game. Um, but I thought this game was interesting enough that I'll still post it. Um, yeah. There were some interesting decisions that were made. Um, this is one of the very few games I have where I have like um, great openings and middle games. Um, pretty rare. Um, but yeah, this game was interesting enough that I uh, I'd still like to post it. A very strong play. Interesting. Is this some kind of trick opening? Is the idea just to get the bishops? Onto b7 and g7, and the knights out to c6 and f6. Is that like a valid uh, defense or something? Yeah, I figured he was going to play a knight, a developing knight move here, um, just because this blocked the bishop in. So, I don't know. It didn't. That, that didn't seem like a very strong move. I just thought a4, uh, queen a4 was kind of funny because I felt like he was trying to keep this very rigid pawn structure and I felt like this sort of messed up his whole plan, you know? So. Uh, C2 was the idea. I wonder what the engine says about d1. I was going back and forth about d1 and c2. d1's excellent and what c2 was best. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So putting the knight in there first. 
That was fine, huh? Interesting. So 95. I see. Hmm. Oh, right. Well, you have to just scoot that over to G8 there. Yaw, yaw. Okay. The one thing that I always go back and forth on in the London system is... I know the idea is to keep the knight on e5, but a lot of times when there's this exchange that can happen on e5, um, the engine seems to recommend putting the knight there first. So like in this scenario, you end up with the bishop on e5, but I can never tell if you want to sort of initiate trades with the knight on e5 first, or you want the knight to end up there like after the exchange, you know what I mean? Um, if that makes sense. That's the one thing I still haven't quite figured out in the London system. Because like the reason why I put the bishop here was because I was expecting him to take, and so I still have the knight on e5, and so the idea of keeping that annoying knight on e5 uh, is like still intact, you know? Like, I figured it's better to end up with the knight here after the exchange. That's why I initiated with the bishop there. But the engine seems to disagree. But... Taking the knight here. Yeah, and see, that kind of goes, goes back to what I was saying here, was that I wanted to end up with the knight here on e5 rather than trading off. That's why I played knight f3 there. So, But it looks like the engine prefers this, huh? Oh, sure. I guess it just blocks in the queen. Let's her in a little jail cell, too. Okay. I just don't think he saw this move. I wonder what a better move for, for me could have been. This is what I thought he was... Um, yeah, see, that would have been a blunder. Yeah, so it, it seemed like it was kind of setting up for a little trap here. That's a miss too, huh? Hmm. I thought that would have been like a stronger play. So f4. Oh, f4. Just add a defender here to g2 and then attack the queen at the same time. Oh, yeah. That would have been a really sneaky move, yeah. I, I, I probably wouldn't have seen that myself. That would I, I probably would have pushed. Hmm, what would I have done? I Knowing me, me being me, I probably would have pushed g3 here. <laughs> But good to know. I never quite think about that. Like defending a square by removing, uh, or sort of by uh, removing a piece that's blocking it that way. But anyways, yeah, GG. Bummer that the opponent left. Um, I actually really wanted to play this one through. I don't play these games very often where the opponent just builds these uh, sort of impenetrable pawn walls. <laughs> so I do like playing against those. Um, they're kind of fun. But anyways, thanks guys for watching and see you in the next one.